Craig McClure, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. How will this conference be unique? How will it be different from the one that came before and the one that will come after? Well, first of all, this is the first time the International AIDS Conference has been held in, in the Latin American region, so that in itself is, is unique. Um, I also think because of the nature of the, of the response to HIV in this region and, and because of the nature of the culture and the, the politics of the region, human rights are really going to be f at the forefront of, of what happens over the next week. In the conference center and outside as well, maybe? Exactly. What do you expect? Uh, well, there are a number of marches. Uh, Mexico is renowned for its marches and demonstrations and political action, which is very exciting. There'll be a, a march in advance of the opening of the conference on Sunday night of treatment activists from around the world. Uh, tomorrow there is the first international march against homophobia that's taking place in the center of Mexico City, the Zocalo, the main square. There is a women's rights march. There's a big human rights march on, uh, on Wednesday. So expecting a lot of healthy political activism both inside the conference center and, and outside. Do you expect, um, in the terms of science, new mm. breakthroughs, headlines to come out mm. of here? Mm. In terms of scientific breakthroughs, this is not, not the year of breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. um, there have been some setbacks over the past year, particularly in the vaccine right. field with the Merck STEP trial um, proving to, 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 to not work. And then uh, the, the NIH's PAVE 100 vaccine trial, which was based on a similar product being cancelled recently by, uh, by Tony Fauci. So there's been some setbacks on the vaccine front, but also a lot of learning, I think, that's come out of the, the, the failed trials. Um, there is some interesting science at the conference. We've had two new classes of drugs, antiretroviral drugs, emerge in the past year, and there'll be uh, more information presented about both the uh, integrase inhibitor uh, raltegravir and the entry uh, inhibitor um, uh, maraviroc uh, and then some interesting kind of conflicting longer term data on um, the drug abacavir and its imp the impact of abacavir on, on, uh, on long term side effects around um, heart problems so some conflicting information mm. is it uh, is it dangerous is it not so uh, on the antiretroviral drug front, certainly, you know, more excitement. We've got over 20 drugs now in five classes, so uh, that's, that's exciting. And when in Toronto two years ago, there, there seemed to be um, the conversation beginning about the tension between treatment and prevention. Mm -hmm. And I've spoken to other people here who expect that to be more front and center than ever at this conference. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. And if so, how do you think that will play itself out? I'm not sure I would categorize it as tension. You know, one of the things... Balance? That the balance. One of the things that the IAS is really pushing at this conference is for more connection between prevention and treatment, particularly around the impact, the potential impact of antiretroviral therapy if it's given across a community, across a population, on transmission. Do you expect during the following week to kind to try to that you will have to have these kinds of conversations to to get people to understand in your view the necessity of reaching 2010 and universal yes. access absolutely and that's what the conference is all about dialogue in in various formats you know there's a, a plenary session two plenary sessions on looking at prevention Myron Cohen session that is is looking at biological interventions to prevent HIV. So we have circumcision, we have antiretrovirals. Antiretrovirals are used commonly to prevent mother-to-child transmission. They're used as post-exposure prophylaxis for people who've been exposed to the virus recently in order to prevent infection. Um, so Myron Cohen will be talking about biological interventions, also vaccine and microbicide mm -hmm. research. Um, there are a number, we were, we're having a press conference about this issue of the impact of antiretroviral therapy on chronically infected people, on prevention. Uh, there's a number of satellites about, on the issue. So yes, dialogue is, is really important. What we'd like to do is advance a research agenda to look at that. You know, we've also been working with WHO, Global Fund, and the World Bank quite closely recently on um, 
the public health approach to antiretroviral therapy and what are some of the unanswered research questions around that approach. And the number one uh, research question that came out of the meeting we held in conjunction with those groups about three months ago was we need to look at the impact of treatment on transmission. Okay. I'd like to change the subject ever sure. so slightly now. I was reading some of your speeches during the past several months, and there was one that you gave in Moscow mm -hmm. earlier this year that was interesting in part because, frankly, it was so personal. And it talked about your life, your experiences, the stigma and discrimination you've encountered in your life. And so I'd like to ask you on a personal level, what does a conference like this mean to you? Hmm. This conference in particular, well, if I can go back for just a moment to talk about the Moscow conference, because I don't often do very personal interviews, but the Moscow Regional Conference, you know, Eastern Europe and Central Asia, Asia is a region with so much stigma and discrimination, so much homophobia, HIV stigma, and stigma against drug users. I mean, in many countries in the region, substitution therapy for opioid users, methadone, for example, is illegal. Mm -hmm. Methadone is a, is, a, is a treatment known to help people stay off heroin and to prevent HIV infection. So when I made that speech, basically outing myself as a gay man, married to a man who is living with HIV healthily, he's been HIV positive for 15 years, and talking about my addiction to smoking and how substitution therapy with patches or gum has often helped me. I still smoke. But the times <laughs> that I've stopped, it really has helped keep me off the cigarettes. And I made analogies to that in, in, in the sense that people have make moral judgments about therapies that are used to substitute another addiction. But the point of substitution therapy is to reduce harm. So just as when you, when you use a nicotine patch, to help you stop smoking. You're still getting the nicotine, but you're not getting the harmful effects of the smoke. This is the case with methadone as well. Methadone, you're still getting to some degree the high of heroin, but you're not getting any of the damage of injecting yourself, uh, having to inject regularly. You're getting levels of, of uh, the replacement um, that really help people stay off drugs. So back to this conference. What's personal to, uh, to, uh, about this conference to me? Well, I, I mentioned earlier that a real focus on human rights and in particular on homophobia. There's going to be a lot more attention at this conference both in the sessions and outside the session halls on uh, HIV and its impact on gay and other men who have sex with men throughout the world. UNAIDS report released last week uh, says that only one out of 20 gay or other men who have sex with men throughout the world have access to prevention treatment and care. That is absolutely shocking given the fact that in the past couple of years we've seen a, a dramatic increase, particularly in Asia. In, in many cities in Asia now have prevalence rates of 10, 15, 20 percent in gay communities. Same rates we had in New York, San Francisco, London in the 80s and early 90s and very, very little programming targeted at MSM particularly in poorer regions of the world. So it, it, on a personal level, as, as someone who you know, grew up with all the challenges of, of, of uh, dealing with my sexuality in the 70s and 80s and then evolving to be you know, head of the IAS, married to a wonderful man, thanks to the Canadian government that uh, recognizes gay marriage, um, and proud of myself. This is an issue and the focus of this issue at this conference is something I'm extremely proud to be a part of. Okay, thank you very much. Good luck this week. Thank you.